Welcome to Who Died Today America, your daily source for honoring the lives and legacies of the notable personalities who've left us. Together, we'll pay our respects to these extraordinary individuals, diving into the significant contributions they've made in our world. If our content touches you, don't forget to hit like and share your thoughts in the comments. Your participation enriches this journey of remembrance and tribute. Cynthia Weil, an indelible impact on the soundtrack of American pop culture, Grammy-winning songwriter and Songwriters Hall of Fame member Cynthia Weil, who along with her husband Barry Mann, crafted timeless classics such as You've Lost That Love in Feeling, On Broadway, Make Your Own Kind of Music, Walking in the Rain, and countless others, has died at the age of 82, as confirmed by her daughter. Born in 1940 in New York City, Weil was part of the elite cadre of songwriters operating out of the famous Brill Building in Midtown Manhattan. Weil, together with Mann, created an extraordinary body of work throughout the 1960s for a range of artists, including the Righteous Brothers, the Ronettes, the Drifters and the Monkees, amongst many others. Cynthia Weil was a trailblazer for women in music. At a time when female songwriters were few and far between, Weil held her own, creating iconic songs that are part of the fabric of American pop culture. She received the prestigious Johnny Mercer Award from the Songwriters Hall of Fame, and was the first woman to receive the Armit Ertegun Award from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Together with Mann, her husband of 62 years, Wiles' work resonated across decades, from 1960s anthems to later hits with Lionel Richie, Peebo Bryson, and the Pointer Sisters. Their songs became not just hits but anthems, expressing the ethos and spirit of the times. A lifelong New Yorker and product of a conservative Jewish family, Vile trained as an actress, singer, and dancer, but her gift for songwriting led her down a different path. Working alongside Mann, the duo created songs that resonated deeply with the public, addressing social issues, reflecting on the human condition, and expressing timeless themes of love, loss, and resilience. In addition to her music, Weil also found success as a novelist, and later co-created a jukebox musical based on their songs they wrote that, providing an intimate behind-the-scenes perspective on their remarkable creative journey. In her music, Cynthia Weil captured a spirit of self-empowerment, resilience and emotional authenticity that continues to inspire. Her legacy will continue to echo through the timeless classics she helped create, shaping the soundtrack of our lives. Tributes to Cynthia Weil Glenn Farr, a master of cinematic rhythm and timing. Acclaimed film and television editor Glenn Farr, whose deft touch and sense of rhythm and timing brought numerous films and TV shows to life, passed away on May 25, 2023, at the age of 77. His death at Cedars Sinai was due to complications from a brain tumor. Farr's finest moment came when he won the 1984 Academy Award for editing on Philip Kaufman's film, The Right Stuff. The Oscar was shared with fellow editors Lisa Fruchtman, Tom Rolfe, Stephen A. Rotter, and Douglas Stewart. Farr expressed his gratitude towards his peers and Kaufman during his acceptance speech, stating, We are privileged to be a part of it, and the experience will long live in our hearts. His editing skills weren't just confined to the cinema. Farr's expertise extended into television, where he edited over 30 episodes of the CBS television series The Mentalist. Other prominent films he worked on include Gary Marshall's Nothing in Common, Anne Bancroft's Fatso, and Real Men. Glenn Farr's legacy in the film industry is a testament to the essential role of the editor in shaping a film's narrative and emotional arc. His sharp eye and knack for pacing helped many directors realize their creative visions, while his work on The Right Stuff exemplifies the art of film editing at its finest. Farr is survived by two daughters, who will undoubtedly carry forward their father's love for storytelling and his dedication to the art of cinema. Tributes to Glenn Farr. <music> Gloria Bell, a trailblazing voice in bluegrass music. Gloria Bell Flickinger, renowned American bluegrass vocalist and musician, known for playing the banjo, bass and mandolin, passed away on May 5, 2023, at the age of 83. 
Starting her career in 1957, Bell is recognized as likely the first female lead singer in bluegrass music, breaking gender barriers and influencing generations of musicians that followed. Born on June 9, 1939, Bell's early career was centered around East Tennessee and Western North Carolina. Her notable performances include those at the CA's Walker Show in Knoxville, Tennessee, and the Ghost Town in the Sky in Maggie Valley, North Carolina. She made regular appearances on the Wheeling Jamboree in West Virginia with Betty Amos's all-girl band, but she is most remembered as a member of Jimmy Martin's Sunny Mountain Boys from 1968-1975. During her tenure with the band, she toured Japan and lent her vocals and bass-playing skills to multiple recordings. Bell's contributions to bluegrass music have been recognized with several awards, including the Distinguished Achievement Award from the International Bluegrass Music Association in 1999. She also received the Recorded Event of the Year Award in 2001 for Follow Me Back to the Fold, a tribute to women in bluegrass. In 2009, her work with the Daughters of Bluegrass earned another IBMA Recorded Event of the Year Award for Proud to be a Daughter of Bluegrass. Aside from her own music career, Bell also formed and fronted the band Tennessee Sunshine in 1990 and was married to guitar Luthier Mike Long. The couple resided in Nashville, Tennessee. Gloria Bell Flickinger's legacy stands as a testament to her pioneering spirit and enduring impact on bluegrass music. Her life serves as an inspiration for countless aspiring female musicians striving to make their voices heard. Tributes to Gloria Bell Roy Taylor, a melodic crusader against motor neurone disease. Roy Taylor, a former Irish Eurovision star known for his courageous fight against motor neurone disease, passed away after a hard-fought battle with the condition. The sad news was confirmed by his family on June 1, 2023, and shared through his charity, Watch Your Back MND's social media platforms. Rising to fame in 1988 with his band Jump the Gun, Taylor represented Ireland in the Eurovision Song Contest securing a respectable eighth place. However, Taylor's influence extended beyond his musical talent. Following his MND diagnosis, he transformed his struggle into an opportunity to help others battling the same disease. Taylor was open about his fight against MND, a condition that damages the nervous system, leading to muscle weakness and wasting. He released numerous singles in a bid to fundraise for research into the condition, utilizing his talent to foster hope and resilience. His children, Terence and Ella, remembered Taylor as their hero, praising his infectious positivity. Despite his personal challenges, Taylor continued to create music with a mission, releasing songs like Music's Door with Irish singer Finbar Fury, with all funds going towards MND research. In a heartwarming demonstration of the unbreakable bond between father and child, Taylor also released a duet with his daughter Ella in 2021 titled I Can't Wait for Tomorrow. His son Terence followed in his father's footsteps, joining him for a duet called My New Dream in 2020. His legacy lies not just in the music he created, but in the optimism he demonstrated in the face of adversity. Through his ongoing commitment to raise awareness and funds for MND research, Roy Taylor's spirit will live on in every note of his songs, providing strength and hope for those continuing to fight the disease. Tributes to Roy Taylor Ronald L. Baker, a beacon of folklore and cultural preservation, renowned folklore scholar Ronald L. Baker, who spent a lifetime contributing to the study and preservation of folklore and cultural heritage, passed away on June 1, 2023, in Indianapolis at the age of 85. Born on June 30, 1937, in Indianapolis, Indiana, Baker was a pioneering figure in the field of folklore. A founding member of the AFS History and Folklore section, he also served as the editor of the Folklore Historian for several years. In recognition of his substantial contributions to folklore scholarship, he was honored with the Lifetime Achievement Award during the centennial of the American Folklore Society in 1988 and elected to the AFS Fellows in 1990. Baker was known for his commitment to education, teaching, and leadership in English at Indiana State University, 
Indiana University Bloomington, and the University of Illinois. His publication record is extensive, covering areas such as legend, ballad and song, humor, literature, proverbs and speech, and names. His dedication to the culture of his home state and the Midwest region manifested in his presidency of the Hoosier Folklore Society and his editorial role in Midwestern folklore and Indiana names. Beyond his academic pursuits, Baker was also a successful author, with several books exploring the culture, folklore, and history of Indiana. His book, Manly Traditions, The Folk Roots of American Masculinities, was a festschrift in his honor, acknowledging his insightful interpretations of gender issues in jokes, songs, recitations, and legends. Through his efforts in organizing folklore archives, annual folklore meetings, and a folklore minor at Indiana State University, Baker championed the cause of folklore studies and cultural preservation. His legacy will continue to inspire future generations of scholars and folklorists, reminding us of the importance of preserving our diverse cultural heritage. Tributes to Ronald L. Baker Willie Marshall, a remarkable talent and enduring legacy in American Hockey League. Willie Marshall, legendary hockey player and former Hershey Bear, has sadly passed away at the age of 91 on June 2nd. Marshall's name will always be synonymous with the American Hockey League, where he holds records for the highest number of games played, goals, assists, and points, a testament to his remarkable talent and enduring legacy. His major accomplishments include earning the AHL scoring title in the 1957-58 season with the Bears and helping the Bears capture the Calder Cup title twice. His contributions to hockey go beyond his personal accolades. His influence can be seen in the creation of the Willie Marshall Award in 2004, which is given to the AHL player who scores the most goals in a season, celebrating the offensive prowess that Marshall himself was known for. Additionally, he was inducted into the AHL Hall of Fame in 2006 and became an inaugural member of the Hershey Bears Hockey Club Hall of Fame in 2012, underlining his importance to the team and the league. Marshall's lasting impact on the sport of hockey is undeniable. His dedication, skill and sportsmanship continue to inspire future generations of players. His passing is a significant loss to the hockey world, but his legacy in the sport endures. Tributes to Willie Marshall Margaret Carstensen, a lifelong conduit of intense performances. Margaret Carstensen, revered German film and stage actress, has passed away at 83 on June 1st after a prolonged illness. Known for her seminal role in the 1972 film The Bitter Tears of Petra von Kant, directed by the illustrious Rainer Werner Fassbinder, Carstensen captured audiences' hearts and minds, earning a German Film Award for her performance. Carstensen was no stranger to acclaim, her roles in Fassbinder's films Martha, Chinese Roulette, and Women in New York are etched in cinematic history. Additionally, her work on stage, especially in Christoph Schlingensief's 100 Years of Adolf Hitler, displayed her tremendous versatility. Carstensen's contribution to Elfriede Jelinek's Bambiland at Vienna's Burgtheater and her performances in the crime series Tator attest to her far reaching impact. Carstensen's rich tapestry of roles, resulted in her receiving the prestigious Goetz George Lifetime Achievement Award in 2019. Her contributions pushed boundaries and set precedents in the acting world, making her an iconic figure in German cinema and theatre. Her loss leaves a void, but her legacy lives on through her captivating performances that continue to inspire generations of actors and filmmakers. Tributes to Margit Carstensen Patricia Dainton, a stalwart of British cinema and television. Patricia Dainton, a celebrated actress who left an indelible mark on British film and television, has passed away at the age of 93 on May 31, 2023. Born in Scotland and having moved to London at the age of 10, she attended the Italia Conti Academy of Theatre Arts 
and started her journey into the world of acting. Dainton made her stage debut in Stratford-upon-Avon and graced various London suburb theatres with her presence. Her journey to the silver screen began with the 1947 film Dancing with Crime, marking the onset of a prolific career. Over the course of her career, Dainton starred in a series of acclaimed films including Castle in the Air, Hammer the Toff, Operation Diplomat, and Witness in the Dark. Dainton's imprint on television was equally significant. She was a cornerstone of ITV's Sixpenny Corner, the UK's first daily soap, appearing in 179 episodes from 1955 to 1956. Her acting prowess made her a beloved figure in homes across the nation. Off-screen, Dainton shared her life with actor and producer Norman Williams, with whom she had four children. Despite retiring from acting, Dainton stayed connected to her craft, even appearing at the renowned film festival at the age of 86 to introduce her films in An Afternoon with Patricia Dainton. Patricia Dainton's legacy in the realm of British film and television is profound. Her contribution to the industry is a testament to her talent, dedication and passion. She leaves behind a treasure trove of performances that will continue to inspire future generations. Tributes to Patricia Dainton. Helmut Berger, a dazzling star of European cinema and vanguard of authenticity. International film star Helmut Berger, renowned for his roles in films directed by Lucino Visconti and Vittorio De Sica, has passed away at the age of 78 in his home city of Salzburg, Austria. Known for his transcendent acting abilities and his personal commitment to authenticity, Berger leaves behind a legacy that has deeply imprinted on European cinema. Berger's talent was spotted early by mentor Visconti leading to a series of memorable performances in The Damned, Violence and Passion, and Ludwig II. His portrayal of Ludwig II, the Bavarian fairy tale king, was lauded globally as a masterpiece, forever cementing Berger's name in the annals of film history. His striking looks and androgynous charm were put to effective use in Dalamano's Dorian Gray, underlining his versatility as an actor. In addition to his European film roles, Berger also featured in Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather Part III and famously made an appearance in Madonna's 1992 music video Erotica. Berger's influence even extended to Madonna's controversial book, demonstrating his wide-reaching impact in the entertainment world. Unapologetically open about his bisexuality at a time when such public affirmations were rare, Berger was known for his relationships with notable figures such as Visconti, Marisa Berenson, Francesca Guidato, Rudolf Nureyev, Tab Hunter, Ursula Andres, and reportedly, both Mick and Bianca Jagger. Berger's agency, Helmut Werner Management, lauded him as one of the greatest and most talented actors European cinema had ever seen. His life, lived in three languages and without regret, has inspired several generations and is testament to his undying spirit of self-expression. Tributes to Helmut Berger Ed Ames, an accomplished singer from the Ames Brothers Quartet and notable TV star known for his role in Daniel Boone, passed away at age 95 at his home in Los Angeles. Born on July 9, 1927, Ames kickstarted his career as part of the Ames Brothers, charting 49 songs before going solo and delivering hits such as Who Will Answer, My Cup Runneth Over, and Try to Remember. Alongside his music career, Ames proved himself as a talented actor, starring in off-Broadway shows like The Crucible and The Fantastics, as well as on Broadway in Carnival and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Despite his Russian-Jewish heritage, Ames often played Native American characters, most notably Mingo, a Cherokee character in Daniel Boone. His diverse talent range, from music to acting, even to tomahawk throwing, has left a unique mark on the entertainment industry. With a career spanning various platforms, Ames will be remembered for his distinct contribution to music, stage and television. Daniel Brooks, a luminary in Canadian theatre, passed away due to lung cancer at 64. Best known as a trailblazing director, Brooks continually pushed theatrical boundaries throughout his career. 
His dynamic contributions, including the celebrated the Noam Chomsky Lectures, distinguished him in the field, earning a Governor General's Literary Award nomination. Brooks's innovation and originality were recognized in 2001, when he received the inaugural Siminovich Prize. An instigator of curiosity and investigation, Brooks left a profound impact on the theatre scene, reshaping narrative norms and cultivating an artistic space where engaging, compelling works can thrive outside traditional constructs. His indelible influence and lasting legacy will continue to inspire artists and audiences in Canadian theatre for generations to come. Deb Hope, a beacon of journalism and philanthropy in British Columbia. Deb Hope, a beloved former anchor and reporter at Global BC, has passed away at the age of 67. Known for her iconic presence in British Columbia's media landscape, Hope's work ethic and sense of humour endeared her to audiences for over three decades. Hope's career began in earnest at the University of British Columbia, where she first tasted journalism. Her drive led her to earn a bachelor's degree in journalism from Carleton University in Ottawa, followed by a stint with the Canadian press. Her return to British Columbia saw her become a common face in living rooms around the province, first with the now-defunct United Press Canada news agency and, after three years, BCTV, which later became Global BC. Her laughter was infectious, and her dedication to her craft was unparalleled. Her former colleague, Wayne Cox, remembered her as a hard-working professional with a remarkable spirit. However, Hope's legacy extends far beyond journalism. She was an active philanthropist, working tirelessly with numerous charities including the Courage to Come Back Awards, Make-A-Wish Foundation, United Way, Canuck Place, the Down Syndrome Research Foundation, St. Paul's Hospital, the Variety Telethon, BC Children's Hospital, and the AIDS Walk for Life, among others. Hope retired in 2014 and was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, a condition that eventually led to her living in a nursing home. Even in her personal struggle, she left a mark with donations in her honour being directed to the Alzheimer Society of BC Deb Hope's enduring legacy of journalistic integrity and philanthropic commitment will continue to inspire future generations. Tributes to Deb Hope. Pamela Turnua Timmins the guiding force behind the First Lady's Press, Pamela Turnua Timmins, who served as the press secretary for the iconic First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, left an indelible mark in her field. Passing away at 85 from lung cancer, she leaves behind a legacy of pioneering efforts in public relations and media handling. Timmins began her career in the Kennedy family service as a receptionist and secretary in Senator John F. Kennedy's office. With the Kennedys' ascension to the White House, she assumed the role of the First Lady's press secretary. Her appointment marked a new era where an active First Lady faced intensive media and public scrutiny. Timmins's expertise in managing correspondence and media inquiries proved invaluable during this period. During the tragic assassination of President Kennedy, Timmins was present, providing both personal and professional support to the First Lady. Her association with the Kennedys continued even after the President's death. Later in life, she transitioned to work as an interior designer. Despite her immense contributions, her career was shadowed by rumours of an alleged affair with President Kennedy. These rumours, persistently denied by Timmins and her family, resurfaced with the publication of The Dark Side of Camelot in 1997. Despite the challenges, Pamela Tanua Timmins will be remembered for her significant role during a transformative period in American history. Her legacy is a testament to the crucial role of media management in public life. Tributes to Pamela Tanua Timmins. John Bland, a venerable force in golf. The world of golf mourns the loss of South African golf legend John Bland, who passed away at the age of 77 after a courageous battle with cancer. Bland's legacy in the sport spans across continents and generations, his talent evident from his accomplishments in both the DP World Tour and the PGA Tour champions. Born in Johannesburg in 1945, Bland turned professional in 1969 and swiftly made his mark with his victory at the 1970 Transvaal Open. Over his four-decade career, 
He won 36 titles, including the 1977 South African PGA Championship against golf giant Gary Player. Bland's talent only shone brighter when he began competing in the US, where he claimed five senior titles and over $7 million in earnings. His indomitable spirit was on full display when he emerged as the senior PGA Tour Rookie of the Year in 1996, adding four wins to his name that year alone. His competitiveness and camaraderie on the course are remembered fondly, particularly in his exciting duels with Jim Colbert. Bland's passing leaves a void in the world of golf, but his contributions to the sport remain undiminished. His tenacity, skill and grace under pressure continue to inspire golfers worldwide. Bland's legacy lives on in the hearts of his family, his fellow competitors, and every golfer he has inspired. Tributes to John Bland Joe Cap, a resilient quarterback with a unique tri-championship legacy. Joe Cap, celebrated for his dynamic career as a quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings and in the Canadian Football League, CFL, has passed away at the age of 85 after battling Alzheimer's disease. An All-American at the University of California, Berkeley, Cap led the Golden Bears to the 1959 Rose Bowl and played on the school's championship-winning basketball team. His professional career saw him clinch victories in the CFL, leading the BC Lions to two consecutive appearances in the Grey Cup and winning it in 1964. His prowess saw him return to the NFL in 1967, where he steered the Vikings to Super Bowl IV. Despite the loss, Cap's invaluable contribution was recognized when he was named the team's MVP. After retiring from football, Cap ventured into acting and later coaching, never straying far from his love for the sport. He remains the only quarterback to have played in the Rose Bowl, the Super Bowl, and the Grey Cup, cementing his unique legacy in football history. Tributes to Joe Cap. Ed Flanagan, a resilient Pro Bowler and Detroit Lions legend Ed Flanagan, a four-time Pro Bowl center for the Detroit Lions, passed away at the age of 79 in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Born in San Bernardino, California, Flanagan's football career took off after his family relocated to Altoona, where he played high school football. Though he started as an average player, Flanagan blossomed during his time at Purdue University, fueled by a significant growth spurt. Flanagan was drafted by the Detroit Lions in 1965 and quickly earned a reputation for his grit and resilience on the field. He played in nearly every game he was eligible for, made four Pro Bowl appearances, and served as team captain for five years. After retiring, Flanagan coached in the United States Football League and the Arena Football League. He was inducted into the Gridiron Greats Hall of Fame in 2016, among other honors. Flanagan generously donated his brain to Boston University's Chronic Traumatic Encephalopathy Center, which researches the long-term effects of repetitive brain trauma on athletes, military personnel, and first responders. Tributes to Ed Flanagan Thanks for watching Who Died Today America. If you enjoyed this tribute, please give it a thumbs up and share with friends. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more inspiring stories. Leave a comment below telling us who inspired you the most. See you in the next video.